Yo, what's up? It's your boy Devin Styles, aka Nerd Boy, aka Dark Skin Pretty Boy, aka Luke Ribcage, aka Stilo Dev, aka Devin Zoolander, coming at you all the way live from my domicile. And tonight, I want to talk to you about a subject that is near and dear to my heart. What is that subject? Come closer. Psst, psst. Come closer. You know what? That subject is dancing. Yes, dancing. I have a lot to say about dancing because I love to do it so much, but if I'm being completely honest, I have to tell you that I didn't always like dancing. Well, I didn't like doing it. I like watching it. Can I take you back in time real quick? Go with me. The year is about 1992. I'm six years old and my mom has all of these VHS tapes that she shows us and on them is the late great Michael Jackson and he's just killing it. So I'm watching more and more Michael Jackson tapes that my mom made and I just become infatuated with this brother from Gary, Indiana. And he's just like electric on stage and he's fearless and he's unstoppable. And he's everything that I wanted to be as a dancer. But unfortunately, I didn't really get the dancing confidence that I needed in order to get down. Because you know how it is when you dance at parties at family gatherings, when you're like nine or 10 years old, your grandmama be in the, in the back hyping you up. Go ahead, baby, go ahead, do that dance that you do. Go ahead, baby, I see you, that's right. Hot dog, I see you, show them what you're working with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's what my grandmom used to do. And for a while, I was thinking, man, I must be really doing something. Like, I must be a great dancer because grandma is giving me all the love right now. The girls, they're going to love this. When I get out on them streets, when I turn 13 years old and little Bow Wow is playing, you know what I'm saying? We're at the party that's supposed to have adult supervision, but the adult is supervising her telephone and not listening to us at all. So, you know, grinding ensues. And I remember being 13 years old at that party and I just really, really wasn't comfortable with grinding or dancing with girls in general. So let's fast forward a little bit. So I get to my senior prom in high school. First of all, let me say, the woman that I took to the senior prom, she was a prom queen infinity. And the reason why I say that is because she had several proms that she went to during prom season. And I was just number three on her list. I remember I asked her, I was like, hey, would you please go to the prom with me? I didn't say please, I'm not that corny. But I did say, yo, would you go to the prom with me? And she was like, I'll have to get back to you. Then after about maybe two weeks, her receptionist, her nosy ass best friend, tapped me on the shoulder and said, yes, Janine will go to the prom with you. So I was like in La La Land, even though I was sloppy thirds, if that's such a thing, I was just so happy that I was gonna get to go to my senior prom. And I took her there, but my uncle had to drive me, which was really, really demoralizing because in my family, boys are expected to have their driver's licenses before girls do. It's a really sexist concept, but that's the toxicity that I was raised on. And we were always compared to our girl cousins, me and my brother. Oh, well, Tamika and Lakeisha, they got their license. What about you? When you gonna get your license? And I'll be like, uh, uh, I I'm working on it. And it was really hard because my dad wasn't in the house. My uncle wanted to teach me how to drive, but he was all the way in New Jersey. And I wasn't that hype. And I was accustomed to riding on SEPTA, which is our public transportation system out in Philly. So, and I didn't have a girlfriend in high school. So I really didn't have a reason to learn. I didn't have the same incentive that my friends might've had back in high school. So we get to the prom, I'm nervous as hell because here goes this beautiful, woman like she's like a, a real woman and i'm just like nervous and finally there's a song where there's some dancing involved and you know i'm have y'all ever seen first kid when sinbad was trying to teach the little white kid how to dance well that's how i felt when i was at the senior prom because i had never danced really with a woman before so it was just like such an experience so i'm just doing like this you know breaking it down real stiff and proper like like i'm braxton or something and i'm doing this but it's not getting it and then she backs it up on me and this is like 2004 so this is back in the day and she backs it up on me and i'm just standing there like i don't know what to do 
I can move my body like this, but I don't know if she is feeling this shit. So I was just stiff as hell. And there's already enough pressure on guys to have sex on prom night. I knew that that wasn't happening at all. But the least I could do is impress her with my dance moves. But sadly, I was terrible. Then at one point, I remember I started going crazy like this and stuff when Toxic by Britney Spears came on. And I think that was a side of me that, that, that went to school at a predominantly white school and that came out and she was looking at me like I was crazy. But I really like that song Toxic by Britney Spears. I don't know why. It just wasn't a good night. So then fast forward a couple months later, I get to Cheney University. And when I first got there, I wrote a song called The Nerd Boy Step. Everybody started calling me Nerd Boy from that point onward. I won Mr. Freshman in 2004. That was exciting. So I had a little bit of popularity, but I still wasn't comfortable talking to women, let alone dancing with women. So that was still something that was a hang up of mine. And I remember being around my best friends and they are Ray, Garvin, Sed, and Jeff. Those were my homies. And they would see me struggling, like I was a wallflower. Like, let me tell you, I was basically got to give it up. Do you, does anybody know that song by Marvin Gaye, Got to Give It Up? I lived those lyrics. I used to go out to parties and stand around. Why? Cause I was too nervous. To really get down, yeah, yeah. But my body turned me free. I got up on the floor. Oh, I don't know what he says there. But somebody to choose me. Excuse me, can I turn my hat backwards real quick? Thank you. I got to Cheney University and all my best friends the homies, they were really cool with dancing with women. Me, I was nervous as hell. So I remember one time I would be around them and I'd be on the wall, I'd be like, yo, how do y'all do that? And they would be like, yo, you just gotta get out there. It's kind of like double dutch, you know what I'm saying? Or crossing the street on Roosevelt Boulevard. Shout out to Philly. Anyway, so I was like, all right, I would, you know, a woman would be dancing and I'd be like, ah, 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 ah. And for some reason that just wasn't working for them, you know what I mean? It just wasn't working. So. I don't know. I just didn't know what to do. Then one time I remember one of them pushing me towards one woman. And then I remember, I think I got slapped in the face that day cause I was just like doing too much. And eventually I think when I stopped doing the butterfly and I accepted the fact that I would never learn how to do the heel toe properly. I just kind of started moving up a little bit slower, like, yeah, I see you, baby. And I was doing like that. And then, you know, I met a woman and she was like, oh, you know the do si -do too? I was like, yeah, I know the do -si -do, girl. I grew up doing the do -si -do. And that is what broke my dancing virginity. And I'm so glad that I was able to do that because I needed to, I needed to conquer that hurdle. Now I have to admit that everything I learned about dancing was kind of like the movie Hitch where Will Smith teaches Albert Brenneman how to dance. He said, no, this is where you live. And my uncle Ken, he used to tell us about two-stepping all the time and how we don't really need to do too much. All we need to do really is just have a really, really great two-step. So that's where I lived. And that's why the music that I love the most is music that I can two-step to. So my journey as far as dancing has come a long way from not dancing at all to dancing up a storm. It's weird because I can't moonwalk and I can't really dance like Michael, but I got Michael's spirit. So my favorite Michael song of all time has to be Remember the Time. So you remember the time, but I can never get that. I can't be like, like I can't do that like he would do it. Michael, I wanna thank you for inspiring me to dance. I really needed you, brother. So thank you very much. For all of you out there, I want you to make sure that you dance as much as possible. I used to dance like walk in the class. I used to have like an MP3 player on with some headphones. I used to dance like walking from class to class at college. Maybe that's why I didn't have a lot of girlfriends. Although they told me, they said that Nerd Boy had a lot of pull and I just never really took advantage of it. So we'll never know. From now until the rest of my life, I am never going to stop dancing. If you can talk, you can sing. If you can walk, you can dance. An African proverb. So I'm gonna keep dancing.
I'm going to keep dancing, keep having a good time. God, thank you for blessing me so much. And yo, all y'all out there, I hope that you got something out of this video. I'm just basically shooting the shit about dancing because I love dancing so much. I'm a two-step king. I hope that you're dancing and I hope that you're just living life to the fullest. This has been another vlog with your boy, Devin Styles, AKA Nerdboy, AKA Luke Ribcage, AKA Stilo Dev, AKA Devin Zoolander. Coming at you all the way live from my domicile. Peace. Thank you.